Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip and unfortunately I'm coming to you this week with one I hope to never have to make and that's dealing with parasitic infections in shrimp. As you guys know I recently got in a new shipment of shrimp and I was hoping that this source would be better than ones that I used in the past. And while the Caradina species haul look pretty good, the Neos are a hot mess and I think it's really important that we have a dialogue about this. Now as you guys know, the shrimp hobby has grown by leaps and bounds in recent years. And while that's been awesome to see because more and more people are keeping shrimp, it also means it's created a really large demand for shrimp. And more and more shrimp are being imported and farmed instead of being bred in a closed environment. Now most of the Caradina species, your tigers, your bees, your crystals, um, are all still being bred inside, so they don't seem to have any of these diseases. But the Neocaridina, which are being farmed outside, this is your cherries, your yellows, your blues, your rillies, all of those, unfortunately are showing a bigger and bigger prevalence for disease, some of which are more concerning than others. Today we're going to talk about Scutellaria japonica, which is a parasitic trematode that attaches itself between the shrimp's rostrum and lays eggs in the gill plate often in rows. And we're gonna take a look and I'm gonna show it to you on a bunch of the shrimp that I got in in this recent shipment. In fact, about 100% of the Neocaridina I got in are infested with this disease. Now the good news is they don't seem to have any of the diseases that are difficult to treat, but it still means that my quarantine is going to be way extended and I need to make sure that these shrimp are clear. So let's take a look and I'll tell you a little bit more about the disease and what I'm going to do to treat it. At first glance, the shrimp look really good. Now I have to be transparent and say I did already do a treatment on these guys. But what we're looking for is little white branchy appendages in between the eyes and down the rostrum. As you can imagine, it can be really difficult to see with the naked eye. The other thing we're looking for is little rows of eggs right where that dark part on the head is. And those are laid in rows and I can see that on many of these here. You can see it right there, those little like white dots are eggs from this um, parasitic trematode. You can see it on that one too, it looks like little lines of dots. Again, eggs from the parasitic trematode. Now I treated this tank I treated this tank with Paragard because it's a very mild medication. But another alternative is to do a salt dip. And I actually wrote an article about this for Amazonas Magazine that I can link to below. And while this particular disease doesn't cause death, it certainly is problematic. And what's most problematic to me is that exporters think it's totally fine to send shrimp that are diseased. This is why I really encourage people to ask questions of your sellers. Make sure they're really looking carefully at their shrimp and doing a prolonged quarantine in order to ensure their health. Now this disease, because the parasite lays its eggs in the gill plate there, you have to remove the molts for several weeks after treatment because once the shrimp molts, those eggs will hatch and reinfest the entire colony. You can do a salt bath, not in the tank, but in a, in a small container, which is about a tablespoon of salt to one cup of water. You leave them in just until they start to show distress and then you put them back in fresh water and that removes all the visible external parasites. It does not take care of the eggs which means the treatment needs to be repeated in two to three weeks and molts removed. Now you can also use Praziquantel at a dose of 2.5 milligrams per liter, which is the recommended dosage on the bottle. Paragard is very mild and seems to work as well and is a popular choice for treatment. Despite treatment, some of these guys still have an infestation, so I'll have to treat them again. You can see on this one in the foreground, got little branchy things between its eyes. That's the Scutellaria japonica that I'm talking about. All in all, I think I'll be able to preserve all of these shrimp, get them healthy, get them breeding, and be able to sell them, but it's going to add at least a month to my quarantine time, which is really disappointing. So I baited this small container to try and make these shrimp hold still so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. 
They're just making a mess and not holding still, but we'll try anyway. And they're shown in that, just below that brown spot on the head, there's a bunch of lines of little tiny dots. And those are the eggs of the parasite. You can see it right there. It looks like little comb rows. Because I've treated these guys, they don't have many or any active parasites on their rostrum. But again, those eggs will hatch when they molt and reinfest the shrimp. And that is bad news. All it takes is one shrimp having this to infest your whole colony. So it's really, really important that you guys are very careful where you buy your shrimp. So I pulled a shrimp that was dying just so that you could see see how these worms actually attach. You can see on that poor shrimp's leg all those little motile parasites that are attacking it. And while it's often said that this disease is not a big deal because it doesn't kill the shrimp, it certainly does seem to go after those that are weaker. You can see in these shrimp you can see on these seemingly healthy shrimp that they have those lines of eggs right behind their carapace, right under their head. And that means that this colony will get reinfected if I don't remove the molts and any obviously diseased shrimp as well as treating with medications. So the bottom line is what is of the utmost importance as a retailer, importer, or anyone who deals in shrimp is to really maintain exceptional husbandry and take a close look at our shrimp before we sell them. There is no way that the average person, I don't care how good your vision is, would really readily see these parasites on the shrimp. So what I do is take macro photography or look at it close up with my SLR camera with a macro lens so I can see what's going on. The last thing we want as a retailer is to sell shrimp that are diseased that are gonna infect people's existing colony. So if you're ordering shrimp, adding them to an existing colony, it's a really good idea to quarantine or at least take a very close look before you add them to your shrimp display. Now, the bottom line is I don't think that anything's gonna change with the farmers. So the only thing that we can do as consumers is to ask questions, look closely, and be prepared to deal with all these diseases that have become so prevalent and disappointing really. My preference as always is to get all my shrimp from domestic breeders but the demand just simply can't be met in our country right now. So I took a gamble and ordered all these shrimp and I'm really disappointed but hopefully I'll be able to pull them through with no problem and have them be quality specimens in no time. As always I appreciate your guys support and taking the time to watch. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming updates. As always, stop by my Instagram, Facebook, and website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano.